really cool this video effects aren't they or these or these other ones well they are created with BSTC free video editor interested then keep watching this video to the end hi everybody my name is Peter or Pedro in Spanish and to my friends and followers of my channel welcome back many of you know me already since among other things I'm publishing a full course on VSTC in Spanish which in fact has become very popular but today my aim is quite different I just installed the latest VSTC version 6.8 on my computer and its improvements are so good that I decided to try them together with you but this time in English so without further delay let's get into it and let's start now there are many more templates available but what are templates templates are effects with predefined properties collected in a huge library and which you can introduce into your design as is without necessarily having to set their properties which are already set for you but also you can create your own effects and add them to the library for later reuse so let's take a look inside we go inside the video object and to the templates tab you see here are several folders containing rough categories of templates like video effects audio effects etc in fact what you have here is a tree structure of folders where each underlevel goes into more detailed subtypes with the final level showing the effects themselves let's choose transition collection which contains several subfolders we are now within the perspective subfolder and there we select the template horizontal with zooming and drag it into the timeline as you can see we've introduced in fact two effects zoom out and horizontal perspective now we select both and make them longer so we can observe the final effect better now I'll show you a couple of fully new really mind-blowing effects which have been introduced on version 6.8 Number one is the shattered glass effect, which is, by the way, only available in the pro version. Let's use the train video as before. And let's go inside it and to video effects, transitions, shattered glass, which we select and put it at the end of the scene. It looks already quite impressive, isn't it? But as you can see, the effect is very complex in terms of configuration possibilities. So an interesting way could be to use a template. We go templates, video effects, transitions, shattered glass and impact, and drag it into the timeline. And let's try. Now it looks much better as an impacted glass, isn't it? We import two videos. Showing pretty girls. Put them into separate layers with the second one under the first one. And let's shorten them to about six seconds each. And make them overlap for about two seconds. Let's convert the second one into a sprite with the following properties. Use as container, no. Show effects, yes. Fill background, no. Now we place the time cursor at the beginning 
of the overlap section, go into the first video and add a video effect Transitions Paintbrush from the cursor position and to the end of the parent. Now we work on the effect properties. For the transparency, we define an evolution curve which should look like this. And for the rest of the properties, they should be as shown here. Now we go into the sprite and add a rectangle starting from the cursor position and with a duration of about 3 seconds. And covering the whole parent with a solid background and a yellow color. Let's go now inside the rectangle and add there a text. Pretty girl, which I already prepared before. It should last the whole duration of the rectangle. Now we go back to the level of the scene and ensure that our cursor is exactly placed at the end of the first video. Then go inside the sprite again, click on the rectangle and add a second paintbrush transition exactly from there. You're asked if you want to apply this effect to the selected object, you say yes, from the cursor position, so it's perfect. We want to set the properties of the new paintbrush effect, which now look like this. And please note that at this time, we won't change the transparency of the effect, which will now remain constant at 100%. Also note that at this time, we want the effect to start at the right top corner. And at the same point in time, we also add a second effect, namely a transparency effect. Custom transparency from the cursor position. And uh, we put, we'll set this transparency effect under the text, which should have an evolution curve as you see here. And finally, we go inside the text and add a text recoloring effect as the one I had put before here to the cursor position and a duration of about one second. And let us see what we achieve. And now, a very short introduction to another absolutely new and very powerful feature of 6.8. Bezier curves. The use of this feature allows a much more flexible drawing of curved lines in two fields, for drawing free shapes and for the design of effect evolution curves. So let's see how it works. We select the free shape tool and to draw a first point we click the mouse and without releasing it drag it into any desired direction. You'll see a double vector which you then can rotate and extend as you wish. Then introduce the next point exactly in the same manner. Now you'll see the first curved segment and by increasing, decreasing the length of, of a point's vector you increase or decrease the radius of the curves at that point. And by changing its angle, you change the direction of the curve at that point. Of course, you can edit an existing shape any way you need. You can move the whole shape by clicking somewhere inside it and dragging the complete square object marker. Or you can unform the complete shape by dragging the object marker from its limits. Now going exactly over a curve point, like this one, changes the mouse cursor to a typical drag cross, enabling you to move or drag the point as needed, but only the point. At the same time, the point vector reappears, allowing you to change radius or direction as desired. But if you want to insert a new point, then you go to Insert Point and select the menu insert point. Then, as you see, the cursor 
changes to a normal cross and placing and clicking the mouse on the actual shade, for example, here, you insert the new point. To delete a point, you go exactly over it, the drag cross appears, and press delete on the keyboard. But there are some tricky situations. What if we have a point placed exactly over the corner of the object marker, like here? The problem here is the overlapping of two properties, and therefore you won't be able to take only the point, but take the whole shape instead. See? To overcome this problem, you can go inside the pre-shape object by double-clicking on the object on the timeline. And now you see each individual point in the timeline window. After clicking on one of them, you'll have, as you see, only the individual point. The object marker disappears. Now you can select any point, even the one that was hidden before, and you can make any desired change on them. As a concrete example, I'll try to design a moon face. So, more or less. And finally, I'll use this moon face within a kind of cool design, just for fun. Cool, isn't it? Well, that's it for today. I hope you liked it, and if you work already with VSTC, but didn't know about version 6.8, that you got a good feeling of its features and how to use them. And if you like my approach, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel, because that way you give me a big impulse to continue producing videos that bring you a lot of added value, and you will steadily remain informed about my future publications. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>